got my cruise control and no other guy Need to take my baby for a ride Ooh, she's like a smooth stretch of highway Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to TW Teleproductions' North Coast Game of the Week. Well, isn't that a pleasant sight? It is regional championship time as the Perkins Pirates travel down to Frost Calnow Stadium in Tiffin, where they're going to take on the Ontario Warriors. And, man, what a story these Warriors have been. They have an Ohio State recruit, Bod Penn Miller, who is uh, some kind of athlete, but... You know, it's kind of neat when you put a group of athletes against one big guy and the difference that can make is you're going to see how it all unfolds in front of us. But Ontario is a team that trailed by 23 points last week, the previous week, against Shelby, and they came back in the fourth quarter to score, I think it was 23 unanswered. They were down by 22, and they won by one point, 49 to 48. So these guys are never out of a game. They are always poised and ready, and it's because of number eight in your screen, Bodpin Miller, who is headed to Ohio State, and supposedly not going to be a quarterback down there, but going to join the wide receiver crew of Brian Hartline, and we all know the kind of receivers that have been put out at Ohio State in the last several years. Dylan Crabtree under the uh, war bonnet as they get set to take on the Warriors, Mike Young as well. And we've told you before about the game faces these guys put on. Uh, They just are all business once they hit the field. Captain's meeting getting ready to take place at midfield. And this weather didn't dampen anybody's enthusiasm for this ball game. And it might have dampened the passing game a little bit for both teams but it's not necessarily the wind that did that it's uh or the, the rain that did that it's basically the wind that had more of an effect on anything as far as the weather is concerned you know that light mist it looked horrible in the light stanchions but really when you're out there in the middle of it it's just that light mist it's more of an aggravation than it is anything else but again this is the beauty of having all these turf fields hanging around as well so that you don't have to worry about the muck and the grime and the slipping and sliding around that we did in years gone by here comes your fan of the week and it's brought to you by snow trails winter resort located of course in mansfield what (laughs) your fans of the week do i have to tell you again (laughs) <laughs> okay, we're just I've, trying to warm up our hand warmers. I've had enough <laughs> We've had enough? The game hasn't even started yet and they're, Wait, ready. I'm not even going to begin to describe that stuff <laughs> Okay, we need to stop They thought the TikTok cameras were rolling or something It's your Fans of the Week brought to you by Snow Trails Winter Resort in Mansfield Thanks to the uh, Pirate Cheerleaders for putting on a rather interesting show for us Out to the middle of the field where the captains meet and the ceremonial toss of the coin will take place. And the Pirates winning the toss but elected to defer. Doesn't look like many people up there right now, but... A lot of people just kind of hang out in the cars and stuff until the last minute when you've got a little bit of rain and weather conditions that you've got to deal with. A lot of folks dressed in the black and the white getting set for this one and properly attired for this game as well. Chilly, windy. That's a pretty nice pose they've got going for us right there. You always know if you look far enough in the stands, somewhere along the line, you're going to find a pretty. Then if you look on the sidelines, yeah, she'll be complaining as usual. It's like, my gosh. The, the smile is for the camera. It's phony because you just heard what she was doing, and that's complaining. I've got another word for it, but this is a 
G-rated show, so we're just going to leave it alone at that. <laughs> Aaron Caldwell from the Sandusky Register. And now, of course, the typical Remember the Titans entry of the Perkins Pirates. They are ready. It is regional championship. Yeah, there's still five of them there. Thanks very much. And so we're, we're working out all the details, but we're set and ready to go for opening kickoff, which is coming up next on your Game of the Week. I was just making sure my fingers were still there. <laughs> Uh, the fingers are all there, so are our sponsors, which, of course, is Hartung Titles, supporting all of our local athletics for generations across the North Coast. Hartung Title. And the Pirates on the opening kickoff. And Grant Hickman will blast that one into the end zone. And Ontario will start on their own 20-yard line. Mason Van Tilburg in the backfield for the opening run of the football game. And there's the opening break of the football game. So it's almost like Perkins receives the opening kickoff. Because they, on the first play from scrimmage, force a fumble, cover a fumble, and will start on the Ontario 30-yard line. That's a great start in a game at this level for the Pirates. Here's Van Tilburg coming from left to right. And we'll see exactly. It was McGlashan that came in and knocked that football away. And then the scramble is on, and the Pirates on the recovery. Oh, what a great way to start the game on the opponent's 30-yard line. Especially when you've got the weapon, or... I guess maybe I should say the weapons because you've got that offensive line with Isaac Bunce running behind. Bunce for nine on the first play of the game. And you give credit to all these guys up front for Perkins that just keep getting the job done over and over and over again. Cam Frazier up front along with Eli Sanchez. Then he stroll, of course, the center. Hayden Bellini. See a left tackle right there in your screen. And this is the instincts that Bunce has. Nothing at the point of the attack. So you just bounce it outside, find a hole, and hit it hard. And as much as this is individual effort, there still had to be a hole somewhere. So you're looking at the left side of the line, opening up some space right here. The bunts behind Schweinfurth right there. And this is all supposed to go right behind Hayden Bellini, but Bellini hangs on. And you got that inside block in there by Cam Frazier. Nothing there, so Bunce sheds a tackler to the outside and cuts through that little bit of a seam. And even Bodvin Miller, you know, no matter what happens for the rest of his life, Isaac Bunce will always be able to say, I broke the tackle of an Ohio State player. Maybe uh, Ohio State will be taking another little look a little further here. Hmm? Bunce, after the 15-yard gain... Will do his thing again. Right to the corner of the end zone. So on the opening drive, after Perkins recovers the fumble on the 30-yard line of Ontario, they go four plays, all Isaac Bunce for 30 yards into the end zone. I should say all Isaac Bunce and those guys right there. Look at that seal blocked by Bellini. And then the rest is Isaac Bunce as he breaks to the outside and into the corner of the end zone. And Perkins has a 6 to nothing lead. Great start for Perkins. And now Danny Buga, one of 
Two soccer players turned kickers for the football team. Adds on the extra point to make this a 7 to nothing game. And that took just a minute and 29 seconds for the Pirates to slam that thing into the end zone. Once again, Hickman will blast this one into the end zone, and Ontario starts from their 20. You can hear the official in the background telling number six, you're on. Just no gain that time for Miller. You just look at this kid, the way he operates, though, as smooth as he is. He's just going to sling that one downfield and throw it away and out of bounds to make it a third down and ten. What you need to watch all night long is the patience of the Perkins defense. They're not letting this kid outside. That's where he does all of his damage. You're going to outrun Mikey Young? I think not, young man. I don't care if you're going to Ohio State or where you're going. Yeah, we come to play. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about that. Bodvin Miller, built like a big-time quarterback, 6'4", 190 pounds. A sure-handed tackler as you're going to find around here. There's a number of them on this Perkins Ball Club, but Mikey Young getting it done right there. So now fourth down in a punting situation. And for the second time in a row, Perkins is going to start on the Ontario 30. That punt went high and straight up into that wind. And here comes Isaac Bunce along with the wind. We'll carry that for 20 yards down to the 10-yard line where it is a first down and goal. And we'll watch Bunce once again behind that offensive line once again. And Bunce will be the first to tell you he wouldn't be the running back he is without these guys right up front. Then he strolls, sustaining that block through the middle. And that is a 20-yard pickup. And so far on offense, it's been all the line and Bunce. And it's going to continue that way. I'm telling you, folks, <laughs> he just doesn't go down. The legs keep going. His balance stays up. And he has got his second touchdown of the night. Perkins has run six offensive plays in this football game. They've got two touchdowns, and they all belong to number 18. Did he count them all up? Look at Tim Bowles. Oh, my from a tight end spot. Dancing right through four Warriors, through another one, and Bowles past the last two. I'm sorry, folks. That's not your everyday ball carrier right there. That is Isaac Bunce. Danny Buga for point number 14, and the Pirates, with 8.17 to go in the first quarter, have a 14 to nothing lead. Student body, well represented in Tiffin. And all dressed up for the holidays. Once again, Hickman will blow that one through the end zone. And Ontario starts for the third time of the night on their own 20-yard line. Mason Vandelberg into the line for a three-yard pickup to make it a second down and seven. Mandelberg once again will carry for a couple of more. So they're sitting right now, still looking for their first down, first first down of the ball game on their third possession, and facing third and five on their own 25. And there's your running back out of the backfield, Mandelberg for a first down. Picks up eight yards on third down and five. And while Vandelberg's got the hot hand, you keep feeding it. 
Brady Legando is about the last man to stop him after a 22-yard pickup. It's now on the Perkins 45-yard line. Well, that hot hand has a way of going away quickly when you're dealing with this Perkins defense and Dylan Crabtree. Second and 10. James Mahone carries for a yard. It's a third down and nine. Nicely thrown ball on the scramble by Miller. Out to Mahone for 12 yards and a first down on the Perkins 32 yard line. Now all of a sudden the Ontario offense is awake. Miller carries for three. Gets monotonous when I just keep saying Crabtree on the tackle, but that's what happened again. And look who's there again. And number six is all over the place, left and right. It's the first and 10 on the Pirate 21, and there's Miller into the line. Now this kid has broken uh, play after play this year. I mean, he's responsible between the passing game and the running game over 4,000 yards this year. And Perkins still found a way to kind of somewhat keep him under control. Miller's pass is complete. John Mahone. Number six, John Mahon. Tackle on the play for the... There, the PA announcer calling him Mahon. So, well, we'll go with... We'll go with him. It <laughs> keeps coming out of that pile. It's almost like Dylan is sharing his jersey with everybody, just passing it around, because no matter where the tackle is made, six happens to be there. And that's just kind of what's known as a nose for the football. You don't just kind of sit yourself in the right place at the right time, all the time, by mistake. It's a second and goal at the 10 after that one-yard loss from Vandelberg, courtesy of Crabtree. Timeout Pirates, their first of the half. Perkins calling a timeout to try and regroup the defense while we thank the following businesses for their support of the game of the week. Matthews Ford, Leslie Murray Law, Fosco Cement, David F. Cook, Funeral and Cremation Services, Diedrich Motors, Payne Nichols & Company, Good Time Lake Erie Island Cruises, UBS Financial Services, Crush Wine Bar, Dockside Cafe, Sleshman Seed Company, and Pier Pub. <laughs> Off the play fake, here comes Miller turning the corner and diving to the pylon and hitting it for his longest run of the night. 10 yards into the end zone and Ontario doing what good teams do and they've got smacked in the gut. They come bouncing right back. Miller just heading toward the sidelines, just stretching that defense out enough where he can dive into the end zone. So the first score of the night for Ontario. Cooper Kilgore with the extra point, and it is a 14 to seven contest with only 45 seconds left to go in the first quarter on your Savista Bank scoreboard. Into the wind, that ball is gonna go out of bounds and the Pirates will take it on their 35 yard line. Now for the first time of the game, the Ontario defense figured out Isaac Bunce to hold him for no gain and bring up a second down and 10 when our second quarter of action comes up from Tiffin after we take a break. And the Pirates holding a 14 to seven lead. Man of the hour right there, Dylan Crabtree. Their second quarter brought to you by Marketplace at the Cook. Savista Bank, focused on you. 
Also a good look inside the bonnet of Dylan Grant. And there's the Savista Bank scoreboard as we get into our second quarter. The Pirates holding at second down and 10 on their own 35. Toss out into the flats to Blake Parker. Parker with a solid 15-yard pickup out to midfield. And that's worth another look. Pirates love run, running out of this bunch formation. You never know who's going to get the ball. This time it's Parker, and look at the blocking. Every one that was in that bunch responsible for making that play successful. And one of them, of course, being Isaac Bunce. Keep your eyes up. Hey, Parker worked once. Fight Why not again? You know, with all the attention he gets thrown over to Braylon Collier. As a junior, Lake Parker's really had a great second half of the season, and that one for 16. And again, just off the fingertips. Down inside the 10-yard line of Ontario, or that could have been a possible six as well. You can hear the whistles in the background blowing this play dead because there was a false start. Second down and 15. Yeah, that time you've got Maddox Smith coming in to make the stop on Schweinfurth for a loss of nine. It makes it third down and 24. Pirates are capable of this. Just a couple of yards overthrown, Blake Parker saying, hey, you want to uh, think about pulling that yellow rag out of your pocket? And uh, the talk here is, uh, of course, you, you know you interfered with me, right? You know, you know you're out of your mind. I didn't interfere with you. Catch the ball. You get another look at Schweinfurth setting up and firing, and you get a good look right there. Was there interference? Not any interference these referees are ever going to call. But it makes it fourth down and 24. And now, remember, this punt is into that very stiff wind. And Braylon Collier, who we know the kind of athlete Braylon is. He's not going to Michigan State for nothing, but now... He has emerged in the last few games as just a tremendously clutch punter. That went into the wind and out of bounds on the eight-yard line. Special thanks to the following for supporting the North Coast Game of the Week. Bodpin Miller off the play fake will take it himself and will be down after a seven yard pickup. Vantelberg no no takes it for a couple. A yard shy of a first down out on the 17 yard line. Vantelberg again, same play. Only got half of what he did before, but it still is enough for a first down out on the 19-yard line. You know, you're not going to go too long without Miller having his hands on the football as Ontario takes a timeout right here. Just under nine minutes to go in our first half of play with the Pirates holding the lead. Good luck to all of the Pirates from all the folks at Assured Partners. And from Loris Printing since 1966. Good luck, Perkins Pirates from Kelleher Williams, Chervenic Realty, Ben Olamaker, Realtor. And from Pizza Brothers, home, of course, of the foldover. I mentioned it doesn't go too long without Miller putting his hands on the football. 
And here, when he can't find anyone, runs to the outside. And again, there's a great containment by Braxton Miller and great closing speed to chop that one down with a two yard gain. See Evan Straub a little slow in getting up. Miller again drawing lots of attention from that Perkins defense. Not being wrestled of the turf by Morgan Olemaker. It's a third down and four. Miller just throws that one over the head of his intended receiver. Noah Poole. And that brings up a fourth down and four. And Ontario from their own 25. You see Dieter coming very close to picking off that punt. But with the win, they drive the Pirates back to their 35-yard line where Perkins starts all over again. Bunce. Well, they've kind of figured him out the last couple of times he carried the football. That's a five-yard loss. Second down and 15 and off the play fake. Well, you make the call on this one, folks. That was a lot closer than the other one. That's Trey Fowler on the coverage, and Blake Parker just might have an argument on this one. You be the judge. You've got the stripes on right now. They'll play fake for Bunce, and then... Uh, sorry, but that was not incidental contact. But, you know, those things always even out, like they say in the long run. But now on 4th and 15, on 3rd and 15, Pirates need a big play. It's off the fingertips of Joey Dietrich. So now it's 4th down and 15, and the Pirates punting into the wind. Not much on that one, but it is going to be Ontario ball from their 45-yard line. Vandelberg for a couple. Second down and eight. Told you earlier about how Perkins' defense has just contained this kid so well. And look at the bodies on the football. One, two, three, four, right there. Reagan Kaufman first to get up. But watch the attention. As soon as the play fake is there, you've got four Pirates on the ball. There's McGlashan. Bellini's in there. McGlashan ends up down the bottom. There's Reagan Kaufman. There's Morgan Olemaker. Leaves him with third down and eight. It's a pretty good athlete that completes that pass right there. As he chucks it ahead to John Mahone. But one yard shy of a first down. It's fourth down and one. And there is nothing there for Miller, but his second effort is going to get him the yardage needed for a first down and the Ontario drive will continue. Mason Vandelberg, Mason Vandelberg brought down by Bryce Davey. That was after a seven yard pickup to make it a second and three. This ball on the Perkins 37 yard line. First down on the 31 as Miller goes for big yardage up top and the ball comes down short of his intended receiver. And in case you had any doubts whether it was complete or not, Joey Dietrich's always there to help out. Mahon the ball carrier. James Mahon 
Covers nine yards to make it third and one on the 22-yard line. Thanks to the following businesses for their support of the North Coast Game of the Week. Holder Sheet Metal, Jim's Pizza Box, O Supplies, Luco, Pizza House West, Sandusky Steel and Supplies, Gnomes Podiatric Medicine, Steinemann Hafner Insurance Services, Brady Signs, Cook Aluminum, Wendy's, and BGSU Firelands College. Well, a third down and one for Ontario. And look at that swarming Perkins defense. Mahone goes nowhere. Minus two to bring up a fourth down and three. And Ontario elects to take their second timeout with a minute 22 to go in the half. Good luck to the Perkins Pirates from Foster Chevrolet and the Chevy Network. By the Greater Sandusky Partnership. Good luck, Pirates from Coffin and Coffin Company, LPA. Michael D. Coffin. There goes Miller. Going off that back foot and just heaving it over the head of everybody in the end zone. And that means it's a big stop for the Perkins defense. That was a fourth and three, so Sam Schweinfurth back on the field with a minute 14 left to go in the first half. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, that was almost as miraculous a catch as you are ever going to see. Collier saying, my hands were under it, my hands were under it. The official emphatically saying, no, they weren't, no, they weren't. Boy, you have to have quick eyeballs to pick up all of what happened just right there. And second and ten, that ball knocked down and away from Isaac Bunce. By Landon Swords, third down and ten. And we got Braylon Collier with a pass completion on the sidelines for 12 yards and a first down out on the 36. Going to dial up Braylon Collier one more time. That's good for 11 and another first down out on the 47-yard line. Again, over the head of Blake Parker and incomplete, so it's third down and 10. The clock winding down in this first half. Bunce tracked down after a four yard pickup, and now Collier will punt it away once again into that wind. And they're not going to give Miller any chance to run these back whatsoever. The ball roll all the way down to the 10 yard line. Where it would be first down and 10, and Ontario just happy to kneel down with it and get into halftime down by seven. So a quick start for the Pirates, answered back by Ontario. It's 14 to 7 Perkins at the break from Frost Calnow Stadium in Tiffin. Well, third quarter next in line brought to you by the Old Fish House with knickknacks, snacks, and BS facts for all who enter in Huron. And also sponsored by Marketplace at the Cook, downtown Sandusky. There's Braylon Collier, Tim Bowles. It's our second half gets ready to go. Your Savista Bank scoreboard telling the story. Perkins 14, Ontario 7. Perkins getting the ball first. Start the second half, and that ball rolling into the end zone means the Pirates start at their 20. Braylon Collier for a yard loss back to the 19, where it's second down and 11. And Bunce 
This gets the original yard lost back once again to make it third and ten. Out on the 20-yard line. When you need the yards, you go to your clutch receiver, and that's Braylon Collier. He picks up 11 and a first down out on the 31-yard line. I love how high school kids know when you need 10 yards to run an 11-yard pattern as opposed to the pros who, when you need 11, they run about an 8-yard pattern. Bunts for 7. Pirates are on their own 38-yard line with a second and three. Isaac Bunce with seven more for a first down out on the 45-yard line. A little screen pass out on the flats for Bunce. And Isaac carries for 18 yards all the way to the Ontario 37-yard line. This is not an easy pass to complete here. Watch Sam Schweinfurth just wait for the play to develop. And then with a little touch, just threw it over the outstretched arms of the defense and laid it right where only Isaac Bunce was going to catch it and make 18 yards. And a nice spot by the officials. Puts it at the 37 for Isaac Bunce to do this. That's 37 yards worth of Isaac Bunce touchdown right there. And his third of the night. And a huge score for the Pirates. Yeah, but a lot of people say about that one. Wow. Let's take another look at Bunce in slow-mo. It's even better. Makes you believe half of the stuff that he does. Bellini with a great block. Runs right through one, through two. And you think you're going to push me out of bounds? You think you're going to push me out of bounds? Nah. Weak stuff as far as Bunce is concerned. And that's 37 yards for a score and a 20-7 pirate lead. Danny Buga, three for three, and Perkins lead. Just three minutes and 29 seconds into the second half. Great coverage by the Pirates, who will make Ontario start on the 22. Morgan Olemaker, Tim Bowles, Braxton Martin. There was no getting away from that trio. So Ontario starts from their 22, now down by two scores. Bodman Miller. Harvard beats Ohio State on that play. Second down, five. Just slung out into the flats on the right side. Austin Pence. Got a couple, so it's third down and three. Well, he only needed three, and he got three. Perkins sidelined, I don't think, really agreed with the spot of the football right there. But either way, now you got Mahone running for naught. Let's watch again as Mahone takes the left side. 
And the Pirates just give that play no option. There's Dylan Crabtree, naturally. Braxton Martin, Reagan Kaufman, all teaming up for the stop. It's a second down and 10 for Ontario on their own 32. Bellini took the original option away. Kaufman gave him no option to run. So it ends up being an incomplete pass. And third down and 10 coming up for Ontario. Well, we talked about this young kid, I don't know how many times this year, but Bryce Davey, a sophomore, equal to the test once again. Collier returns the ball to the 40. And the Pirates in business, five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. One stepped out of bounds on the 40-yard line of Ontario. You notice that when the pros, you have a running back who runs for a bunch of yards, they have to come out for a couple of plays for a rest. I don't think you could take Isaac Bunce off the field if you had a steel crane on the sidelines. Schweinfurth incomplete across the way. And incomplete for Parker at the goal line. Good defense by Cam Powers right there to break it up. And now Ontario takes over on their own 28-yard line. Well, right here, you got the brothers teaming up to say, uh-uh, on that pass. The Legando boys on the scene. Brady and Caden. Number 40, Cooper Kilgore the ball carrier. No room for Cooper Kilgore, who... Up to this point has been the kicker, and now all of a sudden they've got him in the game as a running back. Third down and nine. Look at that crunching hit by Bryce Davey. Oh, he hurt himself. This is this great stuff, classic stuff for Bryce Davey. Hit him so hard that he actually kind of got a stinger in his own shoulder. Cooper Kilgore, makes it third and nine as we thank the following businesses for supporting the North Coast Game of the Week. Hermes Parker Concrete, Snow Trails, Savista Bank, Matthews Ford, Cameo Pizza, Daly's Pub, Landmark Kitchen and Bar, Shorehouse Tavern, SNH Blinds and Floors, Loris Printing, and Assured Partners, Dave Voigt. Good luck, Perkins Pirates, from O.E. Meyer, employee-owned. The propane division of O.E. Meyer and BGSU Firelands College, Rye Beach Road in Huron. Good luck, Perkins Pirates, from Hermes Parker Concrete Limited of Sandusky. We got a problem, boys. Here goes Kilgore. Kilgore at the ball here. All of a sudden, Kilgore turning into a workhorse when Battleberg, for some reason, was not in that backfield. I don't know if he got hurt or what, but they turned the freshman loose, and he did a pretty nice job. Brought down by number two, Ontario. We'll redo second down. 
and Perkins coaches must be asking the official right there. Is they allowed to run a freshman? See Miller trying to buy time, and finally Evan Straub says, "You've had enough time, my friend." could see he had a lot of time for a while, but then Straub just lowered the boom. Now third and nine on the 21-yard line. Noah Poole. The pass completion down to the 10. It is first and goal, Ontario. Here comes Miller. Pirates stuff him just a yard shy of the goal line to bring up a third down and goal at the one as the third quarter comes to a close. Perkins in control, but Ontario knocking on the door when we come back for the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter is being sponsored by Savista Bank. They are focused on you. Up next is your North Coast Moment. It is brought to you by Shores and Islands, Ohio. A little preview of some cold weather coming up. Nice to look back to the summer off at Old Woman's Creek. You can see the heat just radiating off the water, which is really kind of cool. Oh, well, it won't be long, folks. If the winter goes really fast, that's your North Coast moment. It's brought to you, as always, by Shores and Islands, Ohio. Your Savista Bank scoreboard has Perkins leading by 14, but Ontario that far away from the goal line as we blow this one dead for two things, illegal substitution and delay. They offset, so it's third and one again. And Miller, with his long, lanky body, will reach it across the goal line and into the end zone for an Ontario touchdown. And as we've said before, these guys just, they, they never go away. There's an extra point kick blocked. So it remains an eight-point ball game at 21-13. But on the touchdown run, it ended up being... A face mask penalty, which drew Ontario closer to Perkins' end of the field, so they went for an onside kick, and they covered it on the Perkins' 36-yard line. Reagan Kaufman shuts down the first play of that drive. And there's that little jump pass over the middle, but thrown short of the intended receiver. Good call. It just wasn't executed. And now a third down and 10. For Perkins, we'll look again at Miller running up to the line and then dumping that pass right over the middle. And his man was open. Just didn't get it there. Landon Swords would have had a first down. Now it's a third down and 10. Now Miller throwing for Landon Fultz. But that was marked back by a holding. Now it's third and 25. And Brady Legando on the scene to make sure they don't pick up a first down. They're up to fourth down and nine on the Pirate 35. Good boy. That's the problem as Noah Poole makes a first down catch at the 20. So Ontario, with the score, gets within one score of the Pirates. They recover the onside kick, and now a first down and 10 on the Perkins 20. I'll tell you what, Vodpin Miller has to be one frustrated young man. He has been hounded all night long by this Perkins defense. Whoa! 
Third down and eight on the 18-yard line. And here's this man again. Everybody asking, where did he come from? I don't know, but he's gone into the end zone from 18 yards away. And Cooper Kilgore registers first down number 14 on the night for Ontario and touchdown number three on the night for uh, the Warriors. Here comes Kilgore running left side, and he's just showing, showing some good elusiveness in getting to the end zone. 18-yard touchdown run, a seven-play, 36-yard drive that took three minutes and 11 seconds off the clock. And now the two-point conversion. And Miller will carry it home. So now we've got a brand-new ball game with eight minutes and 45 seconds left to play. This is the way regional championship football games are drawn up to be played. Here's Bryce Davey, who can be dangerous whenever he gets his hands on the football, but not enough field to work with there, and he gets run out of bounds on the 28-yard line. Isaac Bunch, the ball carrier, number 18. Brought down by number 20. Over the middle and incomplete to bring up a third down and seven for the Pirates on their 31. She Schweinfurth tried to buy some extra time. And a good look at the reaction of Morgan Olemaker, who was excited and then like, oh, thought we had it. Now, again, here comes Braylon Collier kicking with the wind. He nails a 66-yard punt to go out of bounds on the three-yard line. We talked about the punting of Collier before, how it's been a big key in the last few weeks, and it continues to be right here. Second down and four out on the nine-yard line. Look how sweet it would be to hold Ontario right here. Timeout by the Warriors. Looks like everyone really wasn't on the same page right there. Instead of messing things up at that point, they call the timeout, and we say good luck to the Perkins Pirates from all the folks at Hermes Parker Concrete of Sandusky. And by Brumbaugh Law Firm, Elder Care and Estate Planning. Good luck, Perkins, from Hartung Title. And good luck to the Pirates also from the world-famous Paddle Bar. Who says it's world-famous? We do, by golly. We're tied at 21. Miller only for two. To bring up a fourth down and one. On their own 12-yard line. We want to talk about a huge play call right here. Before we get to that, these folks support the North Coast Game of the Week, and that's why we're here week after week. J. Bistro Downtown, Gardner Strayer Insurance Group, Snow Trails, Summit Motorsports Park, Loris Printing, Pizza Brothers, Kaufman Kaufman & Associates Company, LPA, Bay Bell Restaurant, O.E. Meyer Company, Foster Chevrolet, The Chevy Network, Ben Olamaker Realtor, and Greater Sandusky Partnership. Fourth and one from their own 12. You can see the Pirates had it pretty well stuffed up, but what you have to remember here is that the Warriors didn't need a whole heck of a lot. All the Warriors are saying they've got it. Perkins is saying they took over the football, but the officials say it's Ontario ball, first down on the 14. Cooper Kilgore couple of yards to the 16 for second down and eight. The ball game hanging in the balance right here on every touch of the football. Great coverage by Bryce Davey. 
It says sophomore on the roster, but you can forget about it. Bryce Davey is well beyond his time as a sophomore. Fourth down and six on their own 18. Let's watch again right here the coverage and the defensive instincts of Bryce Davey. Boy, that is just so nicely played. Just got that hand around the front, knocked that thing down. And it saved a first down, and it creates a punting situation for Ontario. Rodman Miller going against the wind. That's an Ontario roll, and we'll go to the Perkins 40 yard line. So here we go, 314 left in the game. It's tied at 21. Pirates looking for a drive that could give them the lead. Second and seven. There's a little wildcat from Isaac Bunce for six yards. It's third down and one. Re-enter Sam Schweinfurth. Bunce from 149 to the other 49. That's two yards and a first down. Number 13 for Perkins. And here again is Isaac Bunch just doing what number 18 does so well for eight yards. A second down and two, and we're going to let Isaac Bunch tell it all right here. It's just great open field running, pickup of 27 yards all the way down to the 14-yard line. First down, Pirates. Watch the feet of Isaac Bunce. This way, nope, this way. Just dodging would-be tacklers along the way. Bunce for 27, the Pirates are set up on the 14-yard line. Once again, it looks like he's got nowhere, and all of a sudden, he's got somewhere. Six yards down to the eight-yard line, where it is second down and four. Isaac Bunce for the lead. Look at Vinny Stroll. Look at Hayden Bellini. That offensive line gets to celebrate just as much, folks. And with 39 seconds left to play, the Pirates are in the lead. The first drive of the night for Perkins was seven plays, 80 yards. Six of the last seven plays were Isaac Bunce. The last drive of the game, the game winner, Seven plays, the last six of which were Isaac Bunce. They started with Isaac. They finished with Isaac. Got Tim Bowles right at the bottom of all of that while he was helping to clear the way. And now the Pirates, one more from Danny Buga. It is a 28-21 Perkins lead. Only 39 seconds to go, but this Ontario team has been known to pull off all sorts of weird miracles in the past, so don't turn out the lights quite yet. The return is out to the 26, yeah, make it the 25-yard line. For Ontario would start first and 10. Their last gasp effort comes right here. All that pressure, ball is out. McGlashan has it, there it is, and there it goes. By the time that ball came down, I think it was somewhere in Mansfield, Ohio. He got a 15 yard penalty flag for that. However, I'm sure he'd do it all over again if given the opportunity. This is emotion at its finest. Watch the pressure. 
Here it comes. Reagan Kaufman, Morgan Olemaker, balls loose. It's in the arms of McGlashan. McGlashan on his feet quicker than you could ever imagine. And there she goes. <laughs> nothing like the raw excitement of high school football, folks. Just nothing beats it. You had big plays by a big play defense that's been doing it all year long, and they rise to center stage when it counts the most in the regional championship game. Some great sportsmanship for both teams as one timeout is called for Ontario. One more knee for the Pirates. It's official. The Pirates move on, and Glenville is coming up next. That's a whole lot of happy people dressed in black and white right there. Second time in school history that they have a regional championship, and we know what happened the first time they ever got one. They went all the way back in 1999. <laughs> Coach Santoro's mind is always on business. We got two more. Paving the Way is brought to you by Hermes Parker Concrete of Sandusky, Ohio. Paving the Way for the Pirates is that defense. Nowhere for Miller to go. Hoffman coming across. Mikey Young right there basically what they did to him all night long. Miller had a 10-yard touchdown run, and that was his longest play of the night. That's a great defensive effort. That's paving the way, and it's brought to you by Hermes Parker Concrete of Sandusky. Up next is Bring in the Heat for Gunlock Sheet Metal Works Incorporated. Heating, air conditioning, plumbing, and refrigeration since 1889. Where do we even start on this one? It's the Olemaker coming across from the far side. Kaufman near side. Sandwich like an Oreo cookie. Down he goes. Ball pops loose. McGlashan's on top of it. Game winner at Tiffin. And you know what? Eh, we've seen it twice already. One more time! <laughs> the official tried to throw the flag as far as McGlashan threw the football. It didn't work. Bringing the heat brought to you by Gunlock Sheet Metal Works Incorporated on Columbus Avenue, Sandusky. It's your pancake play of the game brought to you by Sandusky Bay Pancake House since 1966. $10 gift card going out to, well, you could take your selection of any number of people in this football game. But we're going to do it to the most obvious one. And that's Isaac Bunce. 22 carries, 201 yards. This being just one of his four touchdowns on the night. That one to put the Pirates on top with just 39 seconds left to play. The young man has rushed for over 2,250 yards this season. 31 touchdowns. That's amazing. That's a career for many. That's more. That's about six careers for many. Japan Cake Player of the Game for Sandusky Bay Pancake House since 1966. Yeah, baby, go 
the state. Final four for the Perkins Pirates. Well, it's only the second time in school history, so you've got to cherish the moment while it is there. <laughs> Eli Sanchez, something like three years ago, you just told me this happened. I had told you you're nuts, but dreams do come true, folks. The thing is, dreams ain't done yet. Glenville is next, a rematch of last year's regional championship game. Perkins gave Glenville their best game of the playoffs last year. Can they do it one more time and get over the hump this year? It's at Clyde High School Friday night. Turn out the lights in Perkins Township and head on over to Clyde. Good luck, Pirates.